When Japan was rocked by a massive earthquake and tsunami back in March, we told ourselves the worst was behind us. Tens of thousands dead, an economy shattered, whole communities razed. Surely the Japanese had suffered enough. But all these weeks later, the crisis is far from over. The crippled Fukushima nuclear plant is still leaking. And judging from the experience at Chernobyl, recovery won't be measured in years, more like centuries. On Japan's eastern shores, where thousands of people once lived, there are now only neat piles of rubble. And an eerie silence to mark the tsunami that so devastated a nation. But it's not long before that silence is shattered, signalling there's another disaster looming. What's it saying, Frank? There's nothing like we've had before. We're heading for ground zero of Japan's nuclear crisis, the meltdown of Fukushima power plant. Okay, stop there. It's more than 20 kilometres away, but already we're picking up its deadly fallout. The radiation is building the further we go in, so it's going to be too dangerous to carry on. So we, we actually have to stop here? Yep. Yeah. I'm not willing to take you any further. Radiation expert Frank Jackson and his Geiger counters tell us we've already come too far. So even, even um, protective gear is not enough? Gamma radiation is um, it's a stronger form of radiation. It, it will go through most things apart from lead. Okay, so that's the sort of radiation we want to avoid. It is, yeah. Okay. Fukushima, a major supplier of Japan's power, once looked like this. These shocking new images show the moment the tsunami smashed into the plant, triggering a series of fires and explosions. Just 200 kilometers from Tokyo, three of the six nuclear reactors at Fukushima are now in meltdown and deadly radiation has already leaked into the sea and air. They say the reactor accident is stable. Yes, that's true. Stable like you're hanging on the edge of a cliff, hanging by your fingernails, and that one by one your fingernails start to crack. That's stability. In other words, it's a race against time. If you thought nuclear disaster had been averted in Japan, then meet physicist Michio Kaku. If you've been exposed to cesium-137 because you're an atomic worker, even after you're long dead and buried, your gravesite will be radioactive. Your great-grandkids can come to the Geiger counters and see that great-granddaddy still has radiation in his gravesite. Are you serious? I'm serious. The death and destruction the displacement of so many families has been quite shocking. And now, nuclear contamination just adds another layer to what is already an unspeakable tragedy. These were obviously people's homes, but with the nuclear power plant just 20 kilometres that way, any decision to come back, rebuild, could well be out of their hands. More than 135,000 people have been forced to evacuate. The streets in towns and villages are now mostly deserted. And locals have been told their food and water may be contaminated. Shall we test these? Mm. Same as an x-ray then, according to this. Okay. So every time you have a cabbage, you have an x-ray? Yeah. These are Japan's radiation refugees. Thousands who are now living in cardboard shelters, sleeping on the floors of public buildings with few possessions and little privacy, and facing a future that doesn't seem to offer much more. When you look at this, I, I mean, I do feel like I'm looking into, through someone's window. <laughs> People have gone to a lot of effort, haven't they, to mm -hmm. try and make a cardboard box home into their home. Yeah, I'm really surprised some of the photographs and even the windows all drawn and, and bookshelves all built up and everything. Many Japanese people like Chia Matsumoto fear their country will never fully recover. 
Do you think you'll ever be able to take food, water, the air you breathe for granted again? Uh, knowingly? No, I don't think so. I just have to believe that that's safe to eat or drink. But somewhere in my mind, I'm sure I know and I always suspect or I always doubt. Is this, I have to ask myself, is this okay? Or if I do this, is it going to show in my health in a few years' time? I, I already do. These are guinea pigs in some sense, human guinea pigs, to see exactly how radiation disperses in the environment and then exactly how it's incorporated into people's bodies, into children. And as the years and decades go by, we will see an increase in cancer. To get some idea of what that means for the people of Fukushima, we've journeyed to the only other place on Earth that has seen such a disaster, Chernobyl. This is Priapet, once a city of 53,000 people, purpose-built for Chernobyl workers and their families, now a ghost town. In the morning, it was 34 hours after the accident, they told people to get documents and get outside of the building. But for the people of that city, they thought they were leaving for just three days. For three days, yeah. So they left everything? Uh, basically, yes. No one will ever go back there, will they? That's for sure. In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor in the former Soviet country of Ukraine exploded. Sergei Ivanchuk was 16. When it happened, nobody in this country, in the world, knew how bad it was. Even the director of the power plant, even the people who worked there. I think the first people who realized that it was bad, those firefighters that, you know, the first victim that died first night. Those firefighters were brought here to this now abandoned hospital. My goodness. And down in its basement are their discarded, contaminated uniforms, their boots, coats, and even a cap. You know what's shocking about this, Sergei, is that 25 years later, this is still incredibly radioactive. Yeah, definitely. It is a terrible reminder of the horrors those rescue workers faced, of not just a fire, but an invisible enemy. I actually don't feel good about being here. Think we should go? Yeah, sure. <laughs> And when it contaminates a community, this can be the result. How is this? At Kiev's radiation hospital, built specifically for Chernobyl victims, children born years after the disaster are today battling cancer and other illnesses believed to be caused by the contamination. How do you feel about that? <laughs> It's something you didn't see, but yeah, it but, but affects you. But uh, I uh, understand that it was very terrible, and uh, uh, this uh, time it was so um, uh, so bad. The containment vessel in Chernobyl's number four reactor ruptured during a safety test, sparking a series of explosions and a fire spewing a cloud of radiated particles across Europe. Helicopters came in with boric acid, sand, concrete, with lead shielding to protect the crew, and dumped 5,000 tons of boric acid, sand, concrete, and just buried the reactor, it took years to do this, and created a sarcophagus. Today, Reactor 4 is an industrial blight on the Ukraine landscape. And the concrete cover you see, a mere band-aid over a molten core that's still hot and some fear is still melting. And there are plans to build a new sarcophagus as this cover is breaking down. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster is still far from over. To this day, there is a 30-kilometre exclusion zone surrounding Chernobyl. 
and visitors must first get government approval to come here because high radiation levels are still being recorded. This device is purely to detect the radiation in the air and this area is supposed to be very radioactive. And when I bring it along to somewhere like this, it, it becomes very active. Oh, mask on. <laughs> Everyone who comes here must be tested for contamination because radiation is in the air and in the soil Clear. and in the food. How many people are being affected still to this day around Chernobyl? I think it's uh, since 1996 over 5 million people. Scientist Irina Lubonska has been testing food from areas affected by Chernobyl. One of the things I feel I should know now is where a nuclear reactor is in any country because it may affect me, even if I don't live in that country. Yes, because as you know, Chernobyl fallout was over the world. Still now in England we have some pastures which are not used for, uh, for grazing of um, animals because they still have contaminated with cesium from Chernobyl. All of us have a piece of Chernobyl in our bodies. Realize that we could take Geiger counters, simulation counters and see, and actually see that radiation from Chernobyl has been incorporated into our flesh and tissue. And that will be the same with Fukushima. That's right. In fact, the whole world will be exposed to the radiation from Fukushima. It means that the radiation went over the Pacific Ocean, sailed over the United States, and it is now circulating around the entire Earth. So we're already getting it. We are already getting radiation from Fukushima. Do you fear that Fukushima will become the Chernobyl of Japan, a dead center, a place that no one can ever go back to? I think, unfortunately, it will become that way, and it has to be that way, or it has to be kept that way. This nuclear disaster brings with it an enemy its victims can't see or smell, yet has the power to take everything from them. A cheap, reliable energy source that could now cost them dearly. Every nation of the world that has decided to go nuclear has to reassess the real dangers. What's going to happen over a hundred year, five hundred year time frame? These things do happen. They don't happen often, but when they do happen, it could wipe out the economy of a whole nation. And so nations have to democratically decide for themselves, are they willing to take the risk?